my dear students again this particular video is going to give you some 50 marks in just 8 to 10 minutes so i would want you guys to watch this particular video again till the end first concept which i'll be discussing what is the condition for the photoelectric effect to happen my dear students remember energy of incident radiation should be greater or equal to work function or you can say uh, frequency of the incident radiation should be greater or equal to threshold frequency or you can say wavelength of the incident light should be less or equal to threshold wavelength right for example you have got a question over here incident light of wavelength 400 nanometer falls on these metals over here right i have to check how many metals will show photoelectric effect my dear students incident light have got the wavelength of has got the wavelength of 400 nanometers that means the incident light is going to carry the energy of 3.1 electron volts so this is my incident energy now work function of metal a is 2.1 electron volts so incident energy is greater than, greater than work function again greater than work function again greater than work function so i would say these are the uh, three metals which are going to show photoelectric effect over here so the answer of this question is going to be three this particular metal it's not going to show photoelectric effect effect why is that because incident energy is not greater or equal to the work function here neither here so these two are not going to show any sort of photoelectric effect over here this sort of a question is frequently asked in different examinations nowadays my dear students concept number two how do we determine order from the rate law for example you have got a reaction okay the question says rate doubles when the concentration of a is increased four times what is the order of the reaction how exactly do you approach towards this question you first of all try to write the rate law r is equal to k concentration of reactant raised per order let me call this as equation number one now the question says the rate is doubling rate is doubling when the concentration of a is becoming four times so now it becomes four times a raised per n this equation number two my dear students if you divide equation two with equation one so rr gets cancelled on left side you get two kk gets cancelled a raised per n a raised per n cancelled it becomes four raised per n so from this particular equation i can say n value has to be one by two so i would say order of the reaction is nothing but one by two so like this you are going to solve these sort of questions which are again frequently asked when it comes to the neat examination my dear students you must have heard about enthalpy change enthalpy change is always equal to activation energy of forward reaction minus activation energy of backward reaction perfect this is one important expression which you need to know you are given with the reaction which is the exothermic reaction enthalpy change is given to me as 135 that means delta h will be equal to 135 kilojoules right since the reaction is exothermic so the sign has to be negative activation energy for the conversion of a into b a into b means activation energy of forward reaction is given to me how much is that that's equal to 100 kilojoules and my dear students i need to calculate e a b now you already know the equation your delta h is nothing but e a f minus e a b now people delta h is given to me as minus 135 is equal to e a f is equal to 100 minus e a b so i would say uh, take this 100 on this side it becomes minus 235 is equal to minus e a b or i would say e a b is equal to 235 kilojoules per mole so activation energy of backward reaction is 235 kilojoules which i was supposed to calculate have an eye on this particular equation but remember you have to check in the examination whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic if it is exothermic delta h sign has to be negative if it is endothermic delta h sign you have to take positive in this particular equation concept number four my dear students sometimes you'll be given you'll be asked what is the rate constant of zero order reaction what is the rate constant of the first order reaction what is the rate constant of the second order reaction my dear students in general remember rate constant expression rate constant unit is going to be mole per liter raised per one minus n where n is the order of the reaction and second inverse if time is in seconds or if pressure is in atm time is in seconds then it's atm raised per one minus n second inverse and n here again represents your order for example you have got the zero order reaction whose n is zero if n is zero rate constant is going to be this or this if you have got the first order reaction n is one 1 minus 1 is 0, anything raised per 0 is 1, so the unit will become second inverse from this expression as well as this expression. Similarly, if you have got the second order reaction, put the n value as 2, you'll be getting the unit of rate constant for this particular reaction as well, right? Now, concept number 5. My dear students, one theoretical concept, right? It has got the mathematical background as well. I'm not going into the details. I'm just telling you the crux which you have to remember. Sometimes you'll be given the cell. You have to check whether the cell reactions will be spontaneous or not remember cell reactions are only spontaneous cell will only work if delta g for the cell is negative or you can say e cell is positive okay for any cell whose delta g is positive or e cell is negative that means the cell reactions will be non-spontaneous and the cell won't be working 
right? And similarly, if delta G for the cell is zero, E cell is zero, remember the cell is at equilibrium at that point of time. So anything can be asked out of these three things which are mentioned over here on the screen. Concept number six, how do we calculate mole fraction uh, of a component in a vapor phase? For example, you have got a solution of A and B over here. Both A and B I'm considering as volatile. So you will have vapors of A as well as B over here. The sky A dash represents mole fraction of A in the vapor phase, mole fraction of B in the vapor phase, mole fraction of A in the solution phase, mole fraction of B in the solution phase. Remember this is the expression. Mole fraction of A in the vapor phase is nothing but P naught A chi A divided by PS. Similarly, mole fraction of B in the vapor phase is nothing but P naught B chi B divided by PS. For example, you have got a question. P naught A is given, P naught B is given, chi A is given, chi B is given. I'm supposed to calculate mole fraction of A in the vapor phase. My dear students, all the parameters are given to us except this PS and PS is the total vapor pressure of solution which as per Rod's law is P naught A chi A plus P naught B chi B. So first of all, put the values over here in this expression, get the PS. Once you get the PS, put it here and get the mole fraction of A in the vapor phase. Similarly, you can calculate mole fraction of B in the vapor phase as well. This is one more short short question which is frequently asked when it comes to the different competitive examinations. Now, Daniel cell parameters. There might be some theoretical questions which would be asked about the Daniel cell. You have to remember all of these things which I'm telling you over here. In case of Daniel cell, your zinc electrode behaves like the anode, copper behaves like the cathode, electron flows from anode to cathode, current flows from cathode to anode in the external circuit, zinc rod dissolves with time, copper rod's thickness increases with time. This is the net reaction which takes place in the Daniel cell. Fault bridge maintains electrical neutrality in both the solutions or you can say it avoids the liquid junction potential. And how many moles of electrons are exchanged between anode and cathode? Two moles of electrons are exchanged between anode and cathode when it comes to your Daniel cell. These are some of the short sure, short sure things. Out of these, anything can be asked in your upcoming NEET examination. My dear students, calculation of Vanthoff factor. How do we calculate Vanthoff factor? For any solute that undergoes dissociation, Vanthoff factor is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 into alpha. For any solute that undergoes association, I is equal to 1 plus 1 by n minus 1 into alpha. For example, let's say you have got the solute this, K3, FeCN6. How will it undergo dissociation first of all? It will undergo dissociation as 3 times K positive plus FeCN6, FeCN6 tri negative. Perfect. So one particle of solute is giving us 3 plus 1, 4 particles. So n value is 4. n means number of particles produced from one particle of solute. So 4 particles are... 4 ions basically are produced from one particle of solute, so n value is 4. If n is 4, alpha is already given to me, so I can say i is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 into alpha. Alpha is 0 0.2. Solve this, get the value of Van Hoff factor. Perfect, this is one more important thing, my dear students, which you need to know. Then, our next concept, that is identification of buffer. How? There will be some solutions which will be given to you, right? And you have to check which of the following forms the acidic buffer, which of the following solution is the basic buffer. My dear students, there are two things which you need to know. Buffers, we have got acidic buffer and the basic buffer. I believe you would have studied that. Whenever in the container you have got weak acid and the salt of same weak acid with a strong base. For example, this is the weak acid. And this is the salt of same weak acid which it has formed with a strong base NaOH. Perfect. So this particular mixture over here, I'll be calling as the acidic buffer. Similarly, whenever you see a weak base, and the salt of same weak base which it has formed with a strong acid, right? This entire thing over here I'll be calling as the basic buffer. For example, this is your weak base and this is the salt of same weak base which it has formed with a strong acid HCl, right? So this particular stuff over here I'll be calling as basic buffer. So like this, you differentiate your acidic buffers and basic buffers from this. <coughs> Again, a theoretical question can be asked. My dear students, concept number 10. How do you check whether the a given species aromatic, non-aromatic or anti-aromatic. For the aromatic compounds, aromatic com compounds are considered to be maximum stable, right? Anti-aromatic are considered to be least stable. The stability of non-aromatic is between aromatic and anti-aromatic. Perfect. Now these are the parameters of your aromatic compounds. Molecule has to be cyclic, planar, complete cyclic conjugation. It should follow the Huckel's rule, which means 4n plus 2 pi electrons should be present in the complete cyclic conjugation. For example, look at your benzene. There are two, four, six, six pi electrons involved. So it is your uh, aromatic compound. Over here, this particular compound, two pi electrons are involved in the complete cyclic conjugation. So it is aromatic. In case of anti-aromatic, only differentiating factor is there are four n pi electrons involved in the complete cyclic conjugation. That means either four pi, eight pi or 12 pi electrons are involved. For example, over here, look at this molecule. Over here, four pi electrons are involved in the complete cyclic conjugation. So this is your anti-aromatic one. Now, my dear students, non-aromatic. 
the molecule which is neither aromatic nor anti-aromatic makes it non-aromatic. For example, look at this particular carbon. This carbon is sp3 hybridized. If it is sp3, the molecule is non-planar. If the molecule is non-planar, non-planar neither comes in this category nor in this category. So it is the non-aromatic molecule. Perfect. Now, my dear students, one table which I want every one of you to remember, anything can be asked from this particular table, please and please take the screenshot. Anyways, I'll be sharing the PDF of this particular session in the Telegram and the name of the Telegram channel is Wasim But Chemistry Official. Wasim But Chemistry Official. Chemistry Official is the name of the Telegram channel on which I shall be sharing the PDF. Anything can be asked from this particular table. Products of electrolysis. For example, you are keeping the electrolyte as aqueous NaCl. Electrode used is platinum or graphite. At anode, Cl2 gas is liberated. At cathode, H2 gas is liberated. For example, you have got fused NaCl. Again, using the same electrode. At anode, Cl2 is liberated. and is deposited. So like this, this particular table is super important. I would want every one of you to remember this particular table on priority. Perfect. Now, my dear students, how do we balance the reaction in the basic medium? My dear students, there's a trick for that. Let me tell you that. First of all, get the n factors of reactants. If you look at the n factor of this reactant, it's 2. n factor of this particular reactant is also 2. Crisscross the n factors. So make this 2 here. Make this 2 here. Perfect. After crisscrossing the n factors, balance all the atoms except hydrogen, oxygen. So there are 4 chlorines here. 4 chlorine. 2 iodines here. 2 iodines here. Now in case of basic medium, we are supposed to balance charge first. Now my dear students, on reactant side, we have got total minus 2 charge. On product side, we have got minus 4, minus 2. That means minus 6 charge. Which side is negative charge deficient? Left side. How many negative charge deficiencies are there? Four negative charge deficiencies. So add four OH negatives on this side. Now, after this, balance oxygen with the help of water. So you have got four plus six. So four plus six is 10 oxygen on this side, eight oxygen on this side. So this side is oxygen deficient. So add two water molecules on this side to make the reaction balanced. So now it's a balanced chemical equation. So my dear students, these were some short, short 12 concepts. 12 concepts means 48 marks, which you are getting from this particular video. Perfect. I'll keep on coming with more videos tomorrow as well as today. Perfect. So stay tuned to the channel and do not forget to join the Telegram channel for more things. So take care. God bless you all and love you all guys. Bye-bye.